The Coach Pete Richardson Show, hosted by Clarence Bugs and Southern University head football coach Pete Richardson, featuring all the excitement of the Southern University football program. Brought to you by Acadian True Value Hardware, SU Jags Online, Casino Rouge, Capital Transportation Corporation, the Clayton Law Firm, Bank One, Baton Rouge Coca-Cola, and Agnes Andrews Allstate Insurance. Now that's what I call fan noise. On Monday, it was an eternity away. By Thursday, you could almost taste it. The weekend, filled with possibilities and, oh yeah, projects. Nobody knows where you'd rather be more than True Value. We get you in and out fast with just what you need. Because the sooner you get done, the sooner you can get back to this thing called your life. True Value. Acadian True Value, serving Baton Rouge for over 25 years. Visit one of our two convenient locations. Hello and welcome to week eight of the Coach Pete Richardson Show. We are on location at the Fox and Hound Pub and Grill on Corporate Boulevard. Clarence Bugs, along with the coach, Pete Richardson. Coach, the longest road trip of the season, but I gotta think that nine hour drive was softened a little bit by the fact that you came home with a big win. Yes, it's been a long season for my football team and going to Alabama A&M, eight hours on that bus, uh, it was a long ride up there and back, but I think the players responded well to that game. How does it feel to have finally put one together with all the aspects clicking, offense, defense, and special teams? Well, overall, it seems like we've been out of sync all year. The offense played well, then the defense and the special teams, but uh, we were due to have a good game, and I thought we started off well in that football game. Psychologically, what's the spirit of the team right about now after practice? I think psychologically, uh, we have a good feeling in our football team. We know even the games we lost that uh, play here or play there, we're right in that football game. A lot of highlights to choose from, so without any further ado, let's get started. We pick up action in the first quarter, the very first possession. Terrence Levy opens it up, running for 16 yards down to the Alabama A&M 44-yard line. Well, what happened, uh, we put a lot of misdirection in because they have a very aggressive defense and uh, they're very demanding, put a lot of pressure on you. Ten plays later, Terrence Levy goes to Dane Lewis, six yards for the TD. Well, there's a new wrinkle we put in our offense where Dane came out the backfield with misdirection. Terrence was able to throw him a good pass for the first touchdown. Justin Mattingly adds to PAT. We're up 7 0. The ensuing drive, four plays into that drive. Travis Nunn goes to the AM 34, but Lindy Francois comes up with a big fumble. Well, Lindy Francois is doing a great job for us. We almost decimated with our linebackers. We're, he did a fine job of stepping in, made a big hit, and came up with a fumble and a turnover. Got to give credit to Ed Reese Brown, by the way, for that recovery. Very next play, Al Trevion, <clears throat> Joe Bear, 35 yards for the score. What happened? We caught him in a blitz, and Coach Orlando did a fine job of calling a, a, a crossing pattern to Al, and he did a great job of running once he received the football. 14 zip at that point. Two drives later, four plays in. Terrence Levy strikes to Devin Lewis, a beauty for 46 <clears throat> yards. Well, another play we put in, especially for this game, uh, we've been working on it all year. You have to have the right time and for it and uh, play action. We knew they were aggressive on defense and a fine fake by Terrence and the running backs, and, and all of a sudden uh, the play was wide open. First quarter ends, you're up 21 zip. Second drive of the second quarter, Terrence Levy finds Michael Hayes for 36 yards. Well, Terrence just seemed like he was 8 for 8 in the first quarter of that football game. And, uh, but three possessions, three touchdowns. We're up 21 uh, to nothing with about seven minutes into that ball game. Unfortunately, we give it up on downs in that possession. The very next possession, A&M starts to move. Kenyon Hambrick mm -hmm. on the receiving end of a 35-yard strike from Chris Gunn. Well, we knew Hamrick is a fine receiver. He runs around a 4-3 in his 40-yard dash, a fine pro prospect. He got him behind the safeties and uh, made a, a great catch, and uh, I think he ended up down about the four-yard line. Four plays later, Big Mo comes up with a big stop on Travis Nunn. Well, Mo has been out hurt uh, with that ankle for the last two or three weeks. This is the first time he actually played, uh, started, and did a fine job on that trap inside. Very next play, Lenny Williams, super freshman, comes up with a super play. Well, Lenny has been playing well for us. He's probably the only true freshman we've had starting for a long time. They tried to run the fade with Hamrick. He did a fine job of stepping inside for his second interception of the year. 
Stop them there. Two possessions later, Gunn goes back to work. Again, finds him, Kenyon Hambrick. It's a loss of two. Lenny Williams again defensively. Well, what they have been trying to do is run that bubble screen to Hambrick on the outside, block of Dries Brown, and I think Lenny did a fine job of making that tackle for about a two-yard gain. Three plays later, Gunn goes back to work, hooks up on a 15-yarder to Curtis Donnell. Well, it was a misdirection coming out of backfield, and Donnell's a fine running back also. Powerful individual, runs well once he gets his hands on the football. Torrey Day from Chris Gunn, 27-yard completion, caps the scoring drive for A&M. Well, if we went into our two-deep shell in the secondary. There's about 47 seconds left in the first half, and uh, all of a sudden uh, he did a hitch and go and got behind the corner, and uh, we had seven points as a result of it. 21-7 at that point. We move right to the ensuing drive. Elvin Joseph, Elvis Joseph, excuse me, Elvis, racks up 14 to the A&M 48. Well, there's another misdirection player in our second in the backfield to try to get that over-aggressive defense, and Alvis was able to get out on the flank for us. Spreaded the wealth around a little bit. Terrence Levy, next play, connects to Devin Lewis, 13 yards on the reception. Well, Devin is having a fine year also. Uh, he's the inside slot. They're doubling on the outside with Hayes, and he's able to make some fine catches for us. 21-7 at that point, and when we come back, we will have more highlights from the Fox and Hound Pub and Grill on Corporate Boulevard. Stay with us. You're watching The Coach. Pete Richardson Show. Southern University alumni, faculty, and students, you can take the yard to the web thanks to SU Jags Online. That's right, SU Jags Online is the official internet service provider of the Southern University National Alumni Federation. You can communicate with long lost classmates, get financial information, news, entertainment, and weather. Follow Jaguar Sports Live and so much more all online at SU Jags Online. Go to www.sujagsonline.net and subscribe today. Right on CTC, we're here to get you there. We're here to get you there. Your city bus can take you anywhere. When you don't, don't buy traffic, traffic, the difference is huge. We're the transportation for Baton Rouge. Right on CTC, we're here to get you there. Even in good times, the needs of Louisiana's communities don't disappear. And sometimes their challenges can seem overwhelming. That's why Bank One Louisiana contributes more than $10,000 a day to education, medical research, the arts, and countless charitable organizations across our state. And it's why our employees devote thousands of hours to causes they believe in. We do it because some things just can't be done alone, and we think it's important to help restore the balance. There's a place where you can go and join the celebration called Fun Fever. Fun Fever, Fun Come to where the action's hot, the sights, the sounds, the tastes, it's called Fun Fever. Fun Fever, Fun Fever. Shake your body, it's a party every day. Welcome back to the Coach Pete Richardson Show. We are on location at the Fox and Hound Pub and Grill. Let's get right back to the highlights. Closing minute of the first half, Coach Terrence Levy finds Al Trevion Gilbert for 24 yards. Well, we got the ball around the 30-yard line, and uh, Levy did a great job of directing us down the field. Hit Al down the middle of the field for that uh, set us up for a field goal with about three seconds left in the half. Unfortunately, we end up coming away with no points. Well, the, the, in that area, the field was treacherous. Uh, it was deep, it was muddy, and uh, he was off to the right with that field goal. Move now to the third quarter, second possession of that quarter, our possession. Terrence mm -hmm. Levy finds Devin Lewis again, eight yards on the completion. Well, Terrence is doing a fine job of sprinting out. Of course, the, the back is cutting down the end to, to make it clear for him to hit that down and out route, and I think he's doing a good job of hitting it. Unfortunately, he comes up just a yard shy, so we give up possession. We move now to three possessions later. A&M back on the move. Chris Gunn again to Kenyon Hambrick. Well, Hambrick had a, a great night. I think he got 10 receptions, about 130 yards as far as pass reception. He's an exceptional receiver. Chris Gunn, three plays later, goes to a real familiar name, Michael Jordan, for 16 yards and a first down. Well, uh, he sprinted out to the right, and Michael Jordan ran it down and out, and he was able to keep that first down going. Big defensive play from Joshua Davis and Byron Hurst. Next play, a loss of five. 
Well, uh, I think Hurst is getting improving every week. Uh, the ends are starting to come around with playing time. They're very inexperienced, but I can see some, some growth in them each week. Defense holds. They have to give up possession of the football. Closing minute of the third quarter now. A&M back in possession. Chris Gunn again. Kenyon Hambrick this time for 17 yards. Well, the offense seemed like a stall in that third quarter, and uh, we continue to give the ball to uh, A&M, and they were on the move as far as throwing the football. Third quarter ends 24-7, started the fourth quarter, A&M still in possession, a 12-yard rush from Curtis Donnell. Well, it was sort of on the outside, he sprinted out, and all of a sudden he handed to Donnell, and he ran around the corner, and eventually they ended up for that touchdown drive. Speaking of that touchdown drive, Chris Gunn punches it in from two yards out to close the margin to 21-14. Well, it started to get tight at that time. The momentum was starting to change. They, he sprinted around the corner, and all of a sudden now he scored their second touchdown, and they're really psyched up. Ensuing possession, we start to get that momentum back. Third play of the drive, Terrence Levy <clears throat> goes to Michael Hayes. Big penalty here. Well, Michael was having an exceptional year, and all of a sudden uh, he's really struggling on the outside, but the individuals are double teaming and holding, and we were able to get a call from it. If it works one time, it'll work again. Two plays later, again, we get another <clears throat> pass interference penalty. Well, we started to move the football, and what they were trying to do was blitz inside, and Michael was left one-on-one. -on -one. We we're trying to get to hit him on a big play, and the defensive back were constantly holding him. First and 10 from the A&M 36, Terrence Levy rips off 10 yards for another Jaguar first down. Well, a misdirection play again. The end was flying upfield, and Ter Terrence came down inside for a plus game to 10 yards. Had to wonder what was going on. Penalties killed A&M in this drive. Very next play, three-yard loss, but again, a face mask penalty gives <clears> us another first down. Well, it was an uh, obvious face mask. Terrence was trying to sprint to the outside, and an individual put his hand in his face mask for another 15-yard penalty. Drive is capped off by Justin Mattingly with a 33-yard field goal, <clears> and you're up by 10, 24-14. Well, that field goal really put us in a great position at that time because it put us in a position where two plays could beat you, and it was important for us to hit that field goal. A&M's next possession, first and 10 on their own 47. Curtis Donnell picks up 10 yards. Ed Reese Brown on the stop. Well, Dreese had been doing a fine job, but we thought they would run a little more option. He did a great job of support and able to bring that running back down. Four yards later, Chris Gunn has an incompletion to Kenyon Hambrick, but the old penalty bug reaches up and bites us on one. Well, there's a lot of penalties going down the stretch in this football game. I think Lenny went across to try to intercept it. It was a high ball, and it kept the drive going. It was fourth down at that time. We turn around and mirror what A&M was doing in an important drive, coming up with another penalty three yards later, three plays later, rather. It's another pass interference penalty. Well, it was a high to the outside, and uh, we was trying to double Hambrick because he was killing us on that, uh, that go route, so they call another pass interference. Three yards later, Kerners Darnell takes it in from a yard out, and we're at 24-20. Well, now it's 24-20, to and things are beginning to tighten up. Uh, I think they drove the ball down it with about seven, eight play drive, and they were able to climb kind of on that drive for that touchdown. Team didn't lose their composure at all, however. The ensuing possession, you come right back. Four plays later is Terrence Levy, 43 yards to Michael Hayes. Well, they were stunting on the inside again. I left Mike one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. We ran the slant. He stepped in front of the defensive back, made a, a few moves, and all of a sudden he missed, and he was gone for the touchdown. 31-20 at that point. We wrap it up with Chris Gunn with the big interception by Ed Reese Brown that pretty much sealed the deal. Well, I think it's Reese did a fine job. I think he, they was trying to go on a deep pattern, and he stepped in front of the wide receiving for that timely interception. Quickly, top choice player of the week on offense this week. Well, I think offense Levy had a, a great game direct, directing our offense, and uh, he did a fine job for us. Uh, defensively, Byron Hurst uh, had about seven sacks or an interception, and all of a sudden uh, he had a, a great game for us. Stay with us. When we come back, it's our weekly trip around the swag. You're watching The Coach, Pete Richardson Show. I'm attorney Tony Clayton. I've tried a number of cases right here in this courthouse. I've probably tried more cases in the last 10 years than most lawyers have tried their entire career. I'm not afraid of a courtroom, and I'm not afraid to try your case before a jury, which means that insurance companies either offer you a fair settlement or we go to trial. My area of practice is personal injury. If you've been seriously injured, give me a call at 344-7000 for a free consultation. You will receive prompt, professional, and personal attention from me and my staff. And remember, at the Clayton Law Firm, we'll be with you every step of the way.
following a few simple directions, your insurance could cost a lot less. To find out how safe drivers can save, see Agnes Andrews at 1200 South Acadian Brewway, Suite 217. You're in good hands with Allstate. Imagine a place that understands you'd rather be doing anything on Saturday other than fixing your faucet. A place that knows you can't spend half the weekend shopping for your weekend projects. True value. For the jobs you do most and look forward to least. Because the sooner you get done, the sooner you can get back to this thing called your life. True Value. Acadian True Value, serving Baton Rouge for over 25 years. Visit one of our two convenient locations. Welcome back to the Fox and Hound Pub and Grill on Corporate Boulevard for the Coach Pete Richardson Show. Coach, without any further ado, let's take our weekly trip around the SWAC and a nail-biter, Grambling 12 to 10 winners over FAMU. Well, it's a great game for Grambling's program to beat the top-ranked team in the country. I think their team played well and speak well for their university. Texas Southern, 21 to 18 squeakers over <clears throat> UAPB. Well, that was a tough football game right there, a real physical game, two fine football teams fighting out to try to get in that conference championship game. Alabama State drops one on J-State, 35 to 24 winners over Jackson State. Well, it's also a big game for Alabama State. Uh, Jackson State is uh, was fighting to try to keep alive their hopes of getting in the championship game, and Alabama State played well. And the drought is over. Their first conference win in 67 <clears throat> games. Prairie View beats Alcorn State 25-22. Well, I think Coach Dorothy is doing a fine job with that program. They need a few more scholarships, but the players are still fighting it in, and they were able to get their first uh, conference victory. Back to last weekend's game, Coach Mark Orlando was up in the box. First time he's been up there in about a month now. Is that a big difference maker for you? I think it's a big difference for the coordinator because they can see the whole field. Uh, he did a fine job of dissecting them and putting us in the right position to score some test downs earlier than we took advantage of it. Injury wise, how did we come out of this contest with mm -hmm. Alabama A&M? The only major injury we had was Chapman, one of the linebackers, uh, got hurt his ankle in the turf. So uh, besides that, that uh, we came out fine. This week, got an off week, uh, first rest from this brutal schedule that we've had so far in the 2000 season. What will we be looking at in particular this week? Well, overall, what we're trying to do is uh, uh, start our game plan for Alcorn. I think Alcorn wants to be ready to play when we go down. They have a fine football team. Unfortunately, they haven't won any games, but uh, we have a lot of injuries, and hopefully we can get those people back to get ready for that football game. Speaking of all corn, offensively, what can the nation expect to see from the Braves? Well, offensively, they, they try to spread you out. They're throwing the football a little more. Uh, most of the time, they try to pound you uh, inside with that football. Defensively, they're real aggressive. They try to make things happen, play man-to-man -man defense. On the other side of the coin, defensively, what can we expect to see up in Lauren? <clears throat> Well, I think it's going to be a great football game. Uh, every time we play up in Lauren, uh, we have a packed house. They get excited. They're ready to play, and uh, even though they haven't won any football games, so uh, we have to be ready and stay focused for that football game. In retrospective, we uh, would be remiss in our duties if we did not mention the fact that this was the first start of the season for Terrence Levy at quarterback, and he came through with flying colors. I think Terrence did a fine job. Uh, he went eight for eight in that first half. That we we're up 21 and nothing. We have a little law in our offense, but overall, I think he, resp he responded to the pressure, given the opportunity, and uh, hopefully, we can go on the rest of the way and, and guide our offense. Got to say a lot about the character of this team to suffer through the adversity that they did early in the season, but to still believe in the coaches, still believe in the system, and turn around with a big win at this point. I think the attitude of our football team is fine. There was a lot of pressure put on our football team at the beginning of the year as far as high expectations, but uh, they know uh, with a few plays here or there, we could have been ready in football games. Our record could have been turned around. Of course, we played some fine football teams along the way. Of course, the coaches have to also feel pretty good to know that, in fact, what they are trying to instill within the team will work given the proper time frame and, of course, the absence of those injuries. Well, it's a maturing process. Anytime you lose 21 seniors off your football team and then really you're starting the left side of your offensive line uh, because of injuries, you have to be patient and hope for improvement each week. Last week and the week before, we had a very special guest to join us here on the studio set. So, as the old adage goes, if it ain't broke, we're not going to fix it. Coming up next, a special guest on the Coach Pete Richardson Show from the Fox and Hound Pub and Grill on Corporate Boulevard. Stay with us. Right on CTC, we're here to get 
you there. We're here to get you there. Your city bus can take you anywhere. When you don't, don't buy traffic, traffic, the difference is huge. We're the transportation for Baton Rouge. Right on CTC, we're here to get you there. There's a place where you can go to join the celebration called Fun Fever. Fun Fever, Rouge Fun Fever. Come to where the action's hot, the sights, the sounds, the tastes, it's called Fun Fever. Fun Fever, Rouge Fun Fever. Shake your body, it's a party every day. Hear it in the air, Fun Fever's here to stay. Fun Fever, get to the Rouge. Even in good times, the needs of Louisiana's communities don't disappear, and sometimes their challenges can seem overwhelming. That's why Bank One Louisiana contributes more than $10,000 a day to education, medical research, the arts, and countless charitable organizations across our state. And it's why our employees devote thousands of hours to causes they believe in. We do it because some things just can't be done alone, and we think it's important to help restore the balance. Southern University alumni, faculty, and students, you can take the yard to the web thanks to SU Jags Online. That's right, SU Jags Online is the official internet service provider of the Southern University National Alumni Federation. You can communicate with long lost classmates, get financial information, news, entertainment, and weather. Follow Jaguar Sports Live and so much more all online at SU Jags Online. Go to www.sujagsonline.net and subscribe today. Welcome back to the Coach Pete Richardson Show. As usual, we are on location at the Fox and Hound Pub and Grill on Corporate Boulevard. As promised, a very special guest with us in the studio, Mr. Cedric Upshaw, the Director of Alumni Affairs for Southern University. Cedric, first of all, thanks for coming in on short notice to share some important information with us. I guess the obvious generic place to start would be for the Alumni Association. What are some of the things going on with your organization as we speak? Well, we do a number of things throughout the year. We support uh, Jaguar Sports for one. Uh, if you notice that uh, for every game, no matter if it's near or far, we're there. Uh, we were in uh, Huntsville this last weekend. Although it was cold, we were still there, so the nation showed up. Uh, among other things, we do scholarships throughout the year. We support needy students as well as gifted students through our chapter scholarship program and through the national office. Persons that are watching this interview and saying to themselves, well, I'm an alum, I need to get a little more involved. How do they go about getting involved in the organization? They can simply call my office at 771-4200 uh, and we can either fax an application to them or put something in the mail to them. Homecoming just around the corner, not far away. No, you've got big plans for that. Sure we do. We have our annual roundup, which is going to take place in the Smith Mor uh, Brown Memorial Union. Uh, it's going to begin at 9 o'clock. It's going to be uh, sort of like a hodgepodge of two or three different events within one to kind of satisfy a number of our alums. So we expect our young alums as well as our older alums to show up. And of course the Bayou Classic is always a biggie for you guys as well. That's correct. This year we're going to be in partnership with the uh, Foundation as well as Grambling State University's Alumni Association. We have two uh, concerts scheduled for Friday and Saturday night. I believe some of the artists of Friday night is going to be Bobby Womack, uh, the Manhattans, as well as Jerry Butler. And on Saturday night, Frankie Beverly and Mays, and our alum, Michael Ward. Where can they get tickets for this big event? Ticketmaster. We have uh, some items that sure. are just out of eye shot on the set here. You want to walk us through these, if you would? Well, these are toddler shoes, newborns, rather. And uh, we have these available in our office, as well as the golf shoe, and some slides as well. Uh, we have about two or three other lines that we are uh, in the process of getting on board. Uh, they can simply order them from our office. They can show up or call us at 771-4200. As well as our Jaguar water, which is coming out next week. So we should have it in full swing by homecoming. Anything, would, I'm, I'm sorry, anything? I want to mention one other thing. Sorry. We have our own internet service. It's called www.sujagsonline.net. Now this works like AOL or Microsoft. You simply would subscribe to us, and the Federation receives $2 a month from each subscriber. That's Mr. Cedric Upshaw, the Director of Alumni Affairs for Southern University. Cedric, thank you again, and good luck to all your endeavors in the future. Thank you. We're back with more of the Coach Pete Richardson Show right after this. I'm Attorney Tony Clayton. 
I've tried a number of cases right here in this courthouse. I've probably tried more cases in the last 10 years than most lawyers have tried their entire career. I'm not afraid of a courtroom, and I'm not afraid to try your case before a jury, which means that insurance companies either offer you a fair settlement or we go to trial. My area of practice is personal injury. If you've been seriously injured, give me a call at 344-7000 for a free consultation. You will receive prompt, professional, and personal attention from me and my staff. And remember, at the Clayton Law Firm, we'll be with you every step of the way. Enjoy the moments that a new day brings. Everyone in the world has a song to sing. Live every day, let it sing. In the last five years, you've updated your computer twice, updated your home entertainment system, updated your camcorder, updated your wardrobe. Isn't it time you updated your insurance? For a free insurance checkup, see Agnes Andrews at 1200 South Acadian Thruway, Suite 217. You're in good hands with Allstate. On Monday, it was an eternity away. By Thursday, you could almost taste it. The weekend, filled with possibilities and, oh yeah, projects. Nobody knows where you'd rather be more than True Value. We get you in and out fast with just what you need. Because the sooner you get done, the sooner you can get back to this thing called your life. True Value. Acadian True Value, serving Baton Rouge for over 25 years. Visit one of our two convenient locations. Welcome back to the Coach Pete Richardson Show. We are on location at the Fox and Hound Pub and Grill on Corporate Boulevard. Closing segment, Coach, open week, long overdue open week, as a matter of fact. Uh, Team-wise, what will we be doing during this open week? Well, it's been a long season for us. We'll practice all the way up until Thursday. Then the coaches will probably disseminate throughout the state as far as trying to do some uh, recruiting. I think we have to add some depth to our football team. We have some fine athletes that's coming out in high school this year. Speaking of recruiting, you and I were talking last week, and it seems like you're kind of chomping at the bit and ready to get out there. I think we had to add some depth to our football team. It's been an unusual year for us. We had eight individuals on our team that had either had a knee or shoulder operation. Uh, this is the first time I've been here, we had so many injuries that were seasoned injuries uh, that cost that individual that whole year. Does it make it easier or tougher as a coach being able to go out and tell kids that you know you might have an opportunity to play earlier or does it make it that much tougher knowing that the injured parties when they return will get first shot? I think overall you have to sell your university and uh, what they're interested in majoring in and also the program speaks for itself. I think the coaches have did a fine job of mending them lines of communication with the high school coaches in the area. We have about eight coaches that uh, are high school coaches throughout the country to help us out as far as recruiting. How important is this three game home stand going to be when we finally get back to play? Well, it's important every time we play at home. I think the crowd and, uh, means a great deal to our football team. Also, our band, they get the fans excited and the players look forward to playing at home. All right, while we are here, we have this opportunity. We need to let you know, and gladly so, we might add, that the Jaguar Journal is now back on the air. You can tune in Sunday nights from 7 until 9 p.m. on Oldies That Jam 107.3 and 104.9. Join Carlos Brown and Coach Bob Bennett. Again, that's the Jaguar Journal back on the air Sunday nights from 7 until 9 p.m. on Oldies That Jam 107.3 and 104.9. On behalf of the coach, Pete Richardson, I'm Clarence Bugs from the Fox and Hound Pub and Grill. We'll see you same time, same station next week with another edition of the Coach Pete Richardson Show.